You are watching the seventh video in the series that explains you how to build your own quadcopter. In this video, you will learn how your TLC microcontroller can receive commands from the receiver. There are four commands that you need to pass on to the microcontroller. The desired values for the throttle and for the roll, pitch and yaw rotation rates. Let's get started. The circuit you are going to build is very straightforward and requires only three male to female jumper wires. Connect the white jumper cable from the receiver channel where the word PPM is written and connect this to a TC pin capable of receiving PPM signals. According to the documentation, pin 14 is a suitable pin. To power the receiver, connect the 5 volt output and ground from your TC to the receiver. When doing the connections, make sure you connect the white signal cable with the second position of the PPM channel of the receiver, starting from the top. The 5 volt power cable has to be connected with the third position of the PPM channel and the ground cable with the fourth. Let's take some time to reflect on the ID behind a PPM signal. Imagine you have a continuously varying throttle command that you send to the receiver. By sampling the signal each 4 milliseconds, you can send the data through a cable to your TNC. This sampling can be done using a signal that varies between a high voltage, 1 on the figure, and a low voltage, 0 on the figure. By changing the time length of the high part of the signal, you can send some data. For example, a throttle of 50% is equivalent to a high signal with a length of 1.5 milliseconds. Similarly, a throttle of 100% gives a 2 milliseconds high signal and no throttle gives a 1 millisecond high signal. This is called PWM or pulse width modulation because you transfer data with different pulse lengths. The PWM frequency of most receivers and ESCs is 4 milliseconds or 250 hertz, meaning that your signal repeats itself every 4 milliseconds with a length that corresponds to your commands. A second communication method is PPM or pulse position modulation. With PPM, you transfer the same information by using the position of the signal in time instead of the width. The width stays the same each time. Let's assume that you want to send the information of two signals from the receiver to the TC microcontroller, the desired throttle and the pitch. When you try to do this using PWM, you will need two cables where you separately record both signals. This is cumbersome and because both signals cannot be processed simultaneously in the microcontroller, you will lose a lot of time. You are now ready to take advantage of the interesting property of PPM. Because only the position of the signals change and not their width, sampling both the throttle and the pitch directly after each other allows you to keep track of their original values by measuring the time from each rising signal value. This means that with one signal cable, information from multiple signals can be transported. You also have to set up your radio controller to send PPM signals. Hold the OK button, select System Setup, go to RX Setup and go down until you find Output Mode. Select PPM instead of PWM and save your choice by pushing and holding the Cancel button. Let's continue with the programming part. The code for handling pulse position modulation is rather complex, so you again use a predefined library called pulseposition.h. Next you create a PPM input object, which is in this case the receiver input and is called as such. You track each pulse starting from the rising edge. Use two global variables for this project. One array which can store up to 8 channel values and one integer that stores the number of channels transmitted by the receiver. To be able to read the receiver data multiple times in the code, you create a function. This function will first check how many channels are available by writing points available behind the PPM input object. If there are channels available, it reads the value of each channel and stores it in the array of receiver values. In the setup part, tell the microcontroller to start reading the PPM stream 
from pin 14. Continue the loop part and read the values sent from the receiver by calling the function. Print the available number of channels followed by the values for each channel. Channels 1, 2, 3 and 4 correspond respectively with the roll, pitch, yaw and throttle inputs. Remember that the array numbering in the Arduino IDE starts with 0 instead of 1, so the receiver value 0 corresponds with the channel 1 or the value for roll. Now connect the TNC with your computer. The red LED of your receiver should blink. Turn on the radio controller. The red LED of your receiver should stop blinking if you correctly binded the receiver to the transmitter, as shown in the previous video. Upload the code to your TNC and open the serial monitor. You see that your receiver sends a value of 8 channels to the TNC, of which we will only use 4. First move the throttle stick. The value changes each time between 1000 and 2000 microseconds, or 1 and 2 milliseconds. Continue with the yaw, pitch and roll sticks and verify that they are working correctly. Congratulations! You have now successfully made a radio connection between your transmitter the receiver and TNC. In the next video, you will see how your TNC can send a PWM command to control the motors.